Yo, yo, yo. Hey, guys, welcome back to another amazing edition of the Best Practices Show podcast. Do you have any problems with cancellations in your dental office? Well, if you're like most offices, the answer is yes. And we get requests all the time. Can you help us with a little training on cancellations and no shows? What do we do? We actually created a great webinar. Today in this podcast, I'm going to give you a glimpse of the webinar that every single day I wake up and somebody's like, can I see that webinar again? So I thought, let's just put it on the podcast. If you want the resources, I mentioned a couple things. You can have my slides for the webinar. You can actually watch it in a video format and you can actually have the capacity tracker if you want that we mentioned in the webinar. If you just go down to the show notes, you'll see there's a link there and you can have it all. Give it to your team and then have a team meeting about it. So here it is. Listen up. Hope you guys enjoy it. And we'll see you soon. Hey, Barrett. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. All right. This is a good one. There are several hundred of you that have signed up for this, and this is a popular topic, not only with the ACT community, uh, but in dentistry as a whole. And this is a big deal, and we'll explain why. But today we're going to cover, in this webinar, seven proven steps to reduce patient cancellation. Now, for those, any of you new to the ACT Dental webinar series or community, this is what we do. It's our 26 year of business working with dental practices. We're a, we're a coaching company and we work with great practices all over the country who are just looking to get better. And we welcome you to just keep showing up and we're going to bring great education so that you guys feel good about this. Make sure you share this with your teams. And our goal is to help you create a better practice and a better life in all of this. So uh, if you registered for the webinar, just a couple show notes here or webinar notes, um, you did all get a, an invitation for a golden ticket. It's our favorite thing that we do as far as events go. We have what's called our To the Top Study Club, where we meet with uh, our doctors in the ACT Dental community uh, once a quarter. And each quarter, we work hard. We share great practices, best practices, best thoughts, best mindsets. It's powerful because I never wanted to be the smartest person in the room and I am definitely not. And it's awesome. And we invite you to join us. And so we believe in this so much. We're having so much fun. It's grown so much that uh, you can have a golden ticket. You can check it out. If you love it, feel welcome to stay. If you don't, you could say, hey, that was great, but uh, not for me. And that's totally cool too. So um, anything you would add, Barrett, before we jump into this? Yeah, so much so much of our success is a result of the thinking and the people we surround ourselves with. And we don't like to guarantee um, a whole lot because guarantees are dangerous, but I will guarantee that our community of dentists is the best in dentistry. If you get into this room, you'll find that every dentist in there is a positive thinker, is wanting to help one another get better. And I just I just leave the our meetings just feeling great every time and it's because of the people. So if you're looking kind of for a group, the right fit, the right group to help you kind of be a better person, be a better leader, be a better dentist, think differently, come and join us on us, see what it's about. And I guarantee you're going to like it. Amen, brother. It's one day every quarter, one day every 90 days where you can think better, go back to your practice and make everything better for everybody involved. So let's go ahead and jump into it as far as uh, proven steps to reduce cancellations. And we're going to take you through the mindset because I could tell you what to do, but really in the important piece of it that is we have to understand why. So if you're a team member watching or being part of this, it's great because now we can start to understand why cancellations happen. So we're going to talk uh, in this way. We're going to cover a couple things in this hour. We're going to talk about the root cause of cancellation or causes and then we're going to talk about the real cost of an empty chair and how those two impact. And then we're going to start to work ourselves out of that. 
And so we'll start to talk about solutions of harnessing the power of systems to improve this challenge. Uh, and then we're going to embrace something called the Ford concept, which we learned into the top from a great client in the ACT dental community. You're going to love that. And then we're also going to talk about why language matters, best practices, how you can use those. And you could share, again, share this webinar with your team members and you'll see its impact right away. And then how do we respond to different patient types? Because there are different types of patients. There are patients that are good for your practice and some that maybe don't value what you do. And then we'll talk about addressing chronic issues in this whole process. But let's talk about root causes of cancellations. Now, I always say this, in dentistry, every cancellation, now this is really important because a lot of times we just throw the grenade at the person at the front and we ask them, just figure it out, keep my schedule full. Well, the problem starts at the chair. Every cancellation that has ever happened in dentistry started at the chair. And what I mean by that is the value, the conversation, and we can't just pass the buck. Yes, everybody has to work together front and back, but all cancellations start at the chair. So if you're looking to solve the root cause of the problem, we have to start further back in the appointment, which is the conversation. Let's talk about root causes. And research indicates why patients cancel. Number one, they do forget, but I would argue that that's, num that's not number one. Actually, number one for us or for me would be lack of value. You know, number the, the second reason why patients cancel is there's just a lack of perceived value by the patient and sometimes by the practice. And some think it's just as well for the practice. They feel like they're doing you a favor by canceling. You ever felt that? Like, I'm, you guys are so busy. I'm just going to help you out by not showing up today. You know, and sometimes we give that perception to patients. We're just so busy. And um, we've seen it in team members' faces. We have great hygienists that are coaches here. They used to breathe in and a sigh of relief when there was a cancellation. Go, oh, a cancellation. So we've got to make sure that that particular energy doesn't get transmitted to our patients. And then reason number four is some have something come up that they would just rather do. It happens. It becomes the value issue. I would rather do this. And they don't realize the economic impact on the practice. Number five, they have an emotional barrier that's very real. Some fear pain and some are afraid they'll receive some bad news or some shame and they're just plain uncomfortable with having their teeth cleaned or the procedure done. And I'm just going to put this off. And then lastly, some just don't want to spend the money on dentistry. You know what? Things happen. Water heater broke, you know, flooded basement. Um, got another bill for one of my college kids. Going to push back the dentistry for this month. Anything you would add to that list, Barrett? You've been doing this a long time. Yeah, I just like we're dealing with human beings. So um, we have to understand human nature and, and, and a lot of what you listed there is right on the money and um, has to do with human nature. And, and our goal is to mitigate that by being proactive uh, while that patient is in the chair. Um, and those are some of the things we're going to get to. You'll never get rid of all cancellations, but we need to make it at a minimum. When you're at 100% capacity and you get one cancellation, yeah, it's a nice little breather. Right. But when you're at 85%, capacity and you get a cancellation now it's hitting the pocketbook big time so we're going to go we're going to work through that um and the whole goal is to to minimize it and and overcome human nature as best you can by being proactive and, and thinking smarter yeah and we're big fans of getting people to think because the root cause of the problem is where you often have to start and i'll just play like we'll play along here but if i was going to come work in your practice the first thing i'm thinking is these are all true and I'm going to start asking really good questions and I'm going to start to decide, is this patient complying or are they committing to the appointment? Because a lot of times you say questions, you ask questions like that. Do you have any questions? No. All set. Yes. And so they're just complying to get the heck out of the practice. But I'm going to ask you a few questions about what you understood, what about what happened in the back or what we just discussed, because I want you committed, committed and complying to a time slot are two different things. If I work the front desk in your practice, I'm going to be the gatekeeper and I'm going to be thinking, oh, 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 you're not canceling little boy. You're coming in. Do you know what I mean? I am going to protect the schedule with my life for the next seven days. So if I'm putting you in here, 
I'm going to look in your eyes and make sure you are committing and not just complying to this. And a big piece of this also, is if you heard in our last webinar, we're big fans of making sure there's accountability on both sides. While I'm going to work hard at the front, verbal skills, appointment reminders, all of those things, I need some help from the back, which means each producer, doctor, hygienist has to be accountable for their chairs. Now, I'm also going to play a hygienist here because I love hygienists. I love great front desk team members. I'm going to own the responsibility of making sure my chairs are full at least 92 to 95% of the time, which means I'm going to engage great conversation. I'm going to tell patients, listen, I consider all appointments confirmed when scheduled. Yes, you're going to get reminders from me, but I need to know if you're going to be here and, and making sure. Now, it just starts with data. And this is a great tool that we have. You can have it. You can email me directly, Kirk at actdental.com, and I'll send you the capacity tracker. All it does is list the number of days on the left. As you can see, hours available and hours with butts in the chair. And if I'm a hygienist, I'm just going to keep track of this. And if I'm below 92%, then I'm going to ask for help. And you're going to find some hygienists on your team that can naturally keep it above 95 and 96%. And what a great opportunity for me, if I'm a hygienist in, in the 80s, to say, what are you saying over there? And you're going to see, there's no accident. There's really good verbal skills that are happening. Anything else you'd add about this tool, Barrett? This is a great tool. Yeah, I, I love you know the idea of the provider becoming, the hygienist becoming more involved in that chair time. It's easier to cancel on the administrative person answering the phone. It's harder to cancel on the hygienist or the doctor. And oftentimes patients canceling don't think the message is going to get back. And we'll talk about some of the verbal skills later. But that that is the essence of it is creating the idea that we're not a commodity. We're special. We're unique. This chair time is valuable. And we're not looking for repeat customers who we thank for spending time in our chair. We're looking for loyal patients who appreciate what we offer and know that it's a partnership and they've got to hold their half of the bargain. Amen, brother. So that's an important piece of it is making sure we've got tools at the front and we've got tools in the back for each one of them. So understanding the root causes of cancellation. Now let's talk about the real cost of an empty chair because the cost of an empty chair is an expensive one. Now, this is an important concept because a lot of dentists just build more chairs to build capacity, and then they get crushed with empty chairs. The important thing is you want to expand from a position of strength. You want to be busting at the seams with the right types of patients. If you hate half of the PPOs or all the PPOs you're on, that is a terrible reason to expand to accommodate more of it. You're just giving yourself more of those problems because an empty chair is not no profit. An empty chair is negative profit. You want to see the vein come out of the dentist's neck on a regular basis. Just let them look at an empty chair. So I think it's really important. Now, even in hygiene, let me simplify this as much as possible. If you're a hygienist or if you have a hygiene team that sees eight patients a day, one hour per patient. One cancellation in most dental practices cuts the profit in half for that entire operatory. If you have a second cancellation in eight patients, you are now working for free in that operatory. There's no profit whatsoever. And if you have a third one, I can almost guarantee you that you're working at a deficit, which means you're losing money. And it would make mathematical sense that if you had three cancellations before the day started in one operatory, just cancel the five other ones and tell the hygienist to stay home because you're going to lose money. Now that's silly. Nobody should do that. But you under you have to understand like a cancellation is not just a cancellation. So we're going to talk about this, but we ha all have to be bought in on these chairs have to be full with the right types of people. And we all have to work together to make sure they're full and accommodate this. And I'll speak, if I was a hygienist, I'm going to be asking for considerations for my pay in the future. And if I've got, if I got my chairs full at 95%, and patients are getting healthier, I have clear line of sight to have that conversation because all indicators would show that what's happening in my operatory is super healthy. So the goal of this is to create some great transparency around what creates a great practice, profitability, 
from front to back. Because when hygiene utilization or capacity drops below 92%, profitability drops dramatically. And, you know, yet on average, the national average, depending on who you listen to, is that 12%, think about that, 12% of patients miss or cancel their hygiene appointment in the United States every day. That's challenging. So our goal with the hope of this education is you don't see numbers in those percentages. Now we have to track that correctly to know the data and the data is important, but I'll start here. You know, we got to put the people, the right people in the right chairs and I'll come back to this, but not every patient is a great patient for your practice. Every business does this, whether you're an airline, whether you're a restaurant, you know, some of you don't know this, but you use Open Table. And Open Table is not really a scheduling app. It's a data collection app. I had one of my favorite restaurants show me Open Table. They know more about you than you would want them to know. They know my average check average. They know if I show up for my appointments. And do you know that if you cancel enough in Open Table, you can get blacklisted, which means you aren't able to make reservations anywhere. So people are collecting data on you all the time. You want to do the same with your patients. Not every patient is a great patient. I think dollars collected by less desirable people that don't value what you do could be considered what are called damaging dollars. Those are dam those are dollars that are just damaging to your practice. So there's A patients, there's B patients, and there's C patients. There's people that value what you do and they show up and they pay. That's as simple as we can make it. And those are A patients. And then there's C patients. C patients don't really value what you do. They don't value your time. They don't show up. It doesn't mean they're bad people. It's just they haven't demonstrated a value for what you do and, and they've shown that by their behavior. Here's what I want you to know about this graphic. 80%, if not 90% of your production comes from the patients on the left, A patients. 80% or 90% of your problems come from C patients. So it's just a few people. It's not your whole practice. It's a few people. All I want you to do is put your energy into growing A patients. B patients, we don't know them yet. They're new to our community. They've heard good things about you. And over time, their behavior will demonstrate whether or not they're good or not good for our practice. And so I did this many years ago. I was in a practice and we coded all the patients in one morning. This was a dentist that did not enjoy going to work. And you could see why. It was just flooded with patients that didn't value. And, you know, as you can see, this isn't one of those things that you just want to enjoy time over time. Whatever your practice style is, your hope is most of the day is with people that you enjoy that like they value what you do. They show up and they pay. It doesn't matter how rich they are. It doesn't matter what social circles they run into. They're just showing up. They value what you do. Now, you're always going to have a few crazies because you're related to them or they're friends of yours from high school, but you can sequester them in a part of your schedule because they're toxic to the rest of your schedule where they don't infect the rest of your day. And so you can, as a dentist, choose to have less desirable patients in your practice for whatever reason, but you don't have to make sure that they're, you don't, you don't have to have them flooded throughout your entire schedule. So it's really important to understand who these people are. And we're going to start with the first instructional piece is I highly recommend you create three appointment codes. And these appointment codes are different than procedure account codes. They're three appointment codes that actually code behavior. And the first one is a no-show. The second one is cancel. And the third one is late. Now, I think everybody listening to this would agree no show, cancel, and late, those are not the same behaviors. A no show is not the same as a cancel. A cancel is not the same as a late. And so what you want to do is break the appointment. That's the first piece. Team members have to be taught how to break an appointment. A lot of times they quote unquote drag an appointment, which means we don't collect any data on it. People call and go, I'm gonna, I have to cancel. And they go, no problem. And they just drag it. And you don't know, and they don't know, and we have no data. When you have data, it removes all of emo all emotion. Coding these behaviors can show you which patients value your time and value what you do. You can post the ADA procedure code, which is D9986, which is no show or missed appointment to the ledger. And in cancel, it's D9987, 
Now, in, if you're using dental intel, you know, I just asked our coaches this morning, it does not record it as an actual visit. So that's one important. And you can come up with your own late appointment code in there. Here's what's really cool. So I'll just stop the screen sharing, but you can, let's say I'm a front desk person or a front, a team member. I can go, Hey, Dr. Barrett, are you sure you want to keep rescheduling um, your, your buddy from high school? Cause he's crazy. Look at all that. You know what I mean? You now have data and you can also talk to a patient and say, Mrs. Jones, as you can see, it looks like our schedules aren't matching up. People only remember what they want to remember. When you collect data, you can now start to make really good decisions, unemotional decisions about who the best patients are for your practice. And without getting into it today, you can create automations or schedule alerts in a lot of the software that when the third appointment code is entered, a window will pop up and say, this is the third time this appointment code has been entered. Are you sure you want to and have them back? So Barrett, anything you'd add about that before we jump on to the next yeah, one? Yeah, you're, you're hinting at a really important point. And that is that <clears throat> I can guarantee that none of us, Dennis, are truly as busy as we think we are, and especially as we feel we are. And my point in that is, unless you're tracking it, number one, and then two, unless you're um, using some best practices around these codes, you won't be able to track it. So one, we have to track it retroactively, butts in the chair. We have to look back and say, of uh, the eight hours of chair time that was filled at the beginning of the week and the day, how much actually stayed that way? And then two, in terms of tracking behavior, just to your point, we have these codes, but we have to train our front desk um, personnel to not drag it, to actually break the appointment, add this code. Um, and then to your point, you can track behavior. So the point is that by setting up these best practices, we can actually use data to say, I feel like I'm 110% at capacity. Actually, I'm at 87%. Right. And it helps us use um, set better strategy in that. Let's do more, do more, do more. And a lot of times, a lot of us can really add some significant profitability to the bottom line if we just say, hey, let's fill the chairs we have. It feels like they're full, but actually the data says we could add 7% capacity. That's a lot of profitability. That's, that's part of the strategy. So you're really hinting at... Um, some best practices that are very easy to do that give us good data that now we can make really smart decisions using. I'll add one more thing that I used is I always did no show cancel late. That's the the um, patient's behavior and that's showing them how they value you. Someone that cancels, someone that's no show, someone that's chronically late is showing that they don't value and it's time to have a conversation. And a lot of those patients will, once you point out in a nice way, like this is the behavior we're seeing, we need you to commit to be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I totally will. We found that we sometimes no show and cancel. It w and what I mean by that is moving patients. Right. So we added a fourth code, a non ADA code that says we moved. So hygienist gets sick. I decide to go on vacation. I need to get a sedation patient in there and we have to move someone. And that's another behavior we can look and say, oh my gosh, we've moved this person three times in the last six months. And the next time they're in, I can say, I realize we've moved you. I am so sorry. Thank you for your loyalty. And that goes a long way. So not only tracking patient behavior, but tracking our behavior, because if we're going to hold patients accountable to not showing, canceling, and being late, we got to one, stay on time. That's another thing you can track and not move them. And if you do, you got to apologize for it. I love the fourth appointment code. I'm changing my slides. That's awesome. See, that's the cool part about being on these. You can learn all the time. At the end of the day, here's the deal. There are people that value what you do. And there are people that do not value what you do. And when you spend all of your time or a lot of your time with people that don't value what you do, it affects how you communicate with people that do value what you do. So the big talk now is burnout in dentistry. And I'll tell you, when you have a day of cancellations, no shows, late, you're miserable and you can put on a great face, but that's hard. It's just hard. Your favorite days are when they go the way they should go for most of the day. 
So our whole goal is here to give you some app, you know, some applicable systems that work. Another thing is, is you got to teach people how to treat you. We in dentistry teach people how to behave. A great business teaches people how to behave. The airlines here in Milwaukee train me how to behave. They tell me exactly when to be there. The plane doesn't take off when I get there. They train me. No, you have to come here. You got to go here. And we all go along with it. And so part of this whole thing in cancellations is you got to train people. You can't cancel on me. So whatever your message machine says, it should say something like this at the end. This machine does not accept any changes in schedule. In the event you need to make a change to your appointment, please call back during the day and ask for Betty. We would be so happy to help you. You're teaching people, don't you dare leave the... (coughs) Hi, Betty. This is great. I know it's 5.05 and I know you guys close at 5. You want to kill that as much as possible. And again, I'll be the position of working your admin team. I, If you're going to cancel on me, you're going to call me and tell me personally why you're going to cancel. And I'm going to keep that appointment if I can. Now, if you're truly sick, we'll honor that. But don't you dare call after hours. Now, you can do this with a team member, but what really reduces the amount of cancellations on a machine is when you put the doctor's voice on it. Patients will violate team members you know, over time, but you know who they won't violate? The doctor. So I highly encourage you, Doc, you've got to put something like this on your message machine. If you guys all work with a money manager, your money managers, whether it be your stockbrokers or your, you know, they all have to put this on there by law when you call them. And it says in their message machine, please do not leave any trades on this. The real reason they put that on there is they're going to talk you out of it. When you call them on Friday afternoon and go, buy Apple, they're going to go, that's dumb. We're not doing that. So you want to do the same thing in your dental practice. You want to be able to connect with people and help them make great decisions in the future. And we're going to do this in a, on a relationship basis. Now, another thing that I want to introduce is people don't really cancel on their friends. And the question I really have for a practice that has a lot of cancellations is, is your practice transactional or is it relational? Now, everybody we know says relational, but what shows me you're relational is when I see it happening in your practice and you've got great systems and you've got a couple things in place. It's either the RFR, which is reason for return. And you can put that in the, you know, in the, in the, uh, um, in your, in your software, which is, This is the reason why patients are coming back. Or you can do that in what's called the Ford concept. Now, I actually really love the Ford concept, and I took some screenshots in here. And this is a concept that uh, Dr. Mike Kratz, he has an incredible team member. Her name is Siri, and she came from the hairdressing industry. And I can't thank you enough, Siri, for this. This is so cool. So she brought this concept into his practice. And what they do for each one of their patients is they have an acronym and they use it in the software. It's family, occupation, recreation, and dreams, F-O-R-D. The entire team is bought in on creating a relationship-based practice. We want to know who these people are. We want to be able to talk to them if they try to cancel or if we're even talking to them about their next appointment. I want the patient to feel like we know them. And so here's how it works. And so, as you can see, I've blocked out a lot of the information, but I'm going to show you the critical ones. In their patient alerts, which they use Dentrix up here, you can see there's personal and procedural. And what they use is the personal alerts. And I'll show you how it works. Right in here, you can see he's got the Ford concept. So, the team members over long periods of time, and here's the other thing, you got to be into this in the long haul, not like in one month. But over the next 10 years, we're going to figure out who the right patients are for us. So F-O-R-D, if you're a chairside assistant, I'm going to be invested in Ford. If I'm an admin team member, I'm going to be invested in learning your Ford. If I'm a hygienist, I'm going to be invested learning your, if I'm a treatment coordinator, you know, I want to find out about your family. You can see this patient married. Chrissy is uh, their spouse. They have two kids, Max and Matthew. Occupation, he's a pharmacist for CVS in Whitefish Bay. He loves it. Our recreation loves to do marathons. He's a paddleboarder, likes to ski, kids sports, big Brewers fan. And then his dreams, he told one of my team members one day, he really wants to move to Florida one day and open up a small seafood restaurant. Is that important to know about a patient in your practice? Heck yeah. Now, 
this patient tries to call or cancel or for any reason, I know who this patient is, or at least I have a system that helps me connect better with patients. And I'll speak for the patient's behalf. We are completely underwhelmed in the world of customer service. I'm underwhelmed when I call my MD. They don't know who I am. They've never heard of me. They ask me for payment right away. I would love to call a business. Who knows who I am? Go, oh, Kirk, it's good to see you again. Good to hear from you again. How you doing? You know, type of a thing. So here's what you can do. You can put this all in place. And so use the Ford concept. And when it comes to A, B, and C patients, they put it right here in title. And so they can print this on statements. So they code their patients, A, B, and C patients. And they uncheck print title in statements. Therefore, doesn't show up on statements. It just shows up in the schedule and they know how to give their best energy to the things that matter most. The biggest problem with most dental practices is they don't give their best energy to things that matter most. So if I'm a new team member here, I know who our A patients are because of their behavior, because of their right fit for the practice. So the point is this, you can get creative with this, but create a system in which anybody, even a new team member knows, where do I put my best energy? And so it's not about kicking people out either. I'll just say this about C patients. We don't want to be mean to them. We're just not going to pursue them to keep them in our practice. And so language also matters. And that's step number five. Again, back to the relational or transactional part of your business. You have to value what you do. And so I'll speak to every part of the practice. I have to value what I do. I don't just clean teeth if I'm a hygienist. That cleaning is what happens after you leave your office. Somebody's cleaning your up. You just don't do crowns. You can never say I'm just a dentist. No, what you do is crazy important for people. So we have to value what we do first. And then we have to create value for them. And so when it comes to creating value for them, I want to help them understand why they're coming back for this point. I want to know about them. I want to find out the purpose. What's their long-term goals? And then I'm going to employ four rules of scheduling when it comes to the schedule itself. Number one, if I'm a team member at the front, I'm going to say we're going to schedule today and tomorrow first. I'm going to stay focused on making sure that we have the right patients in the schedule today and tomorrow. Now, I will speak to short call lists. A lot of people teach this in dentistry. When people cancel, we put them on a short call list and we keep stalking them. I'm not a big fan of that altogether because if somebody's canceled 11 times, I'm not putting them on a short call list to try to get them back in the practice a 12th time. If they want to come to our practice and they've canceled 11 times, I'm going to say, Mrs. Jones, as you can see, our schedules haven't lined up. Why don't we do this? Why don't you call me on a day where you know you can make it and I'll do my best to get you in. We're going to put a little bit of the motivation on the patient to get back in the schedule but nonetheless, I want to make sure I've got today and tomorrow scheduled first. Number two, I want to schedule from the start of the day. So these are basic scheduling rules. So again, I hope you can see this. We're going to put the right patients in the schedule. We're going to make sure tomorrow and the next day are full. And then we're going to start from the beginning of the day because we want to get the first five hours the way we want them. And then we're going to get new patients in within seven days. Doesn't mean we need to do a comprehensive exam, but those are some basic rules of scheduling and patients, lastly, rule number four, fit into your schedule. Here's where I'm going with number four. Don't ever say to a patient, what works for you? Don't ever say that. Because if you say what works for me, this is what happens. Or if you say, what, 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 would, what you know, would you like to, or what time works for you? The first thing that I think of is when you say, what works for you? Nothing, nothing ever works for me. You have to create so much value through verbal skills that people rearrange their life to fit into yours. And it happens all the time. It happens with vascular surgeons. In my house, it's hair appointments because I have a wife and three daughters. They will move the earth to get to a hair appointment. You never want to try to squeeze into somebody else's schedule because you instantly devalue what you do. And ultimately that leads to a cancellation. Any thoughts, Barrett, before I go on the next one? Yes, if I can unmute myself. Um, yeah, just life's busy. I mean, life has never been busier in the history of mankind than right now. And right. all of us are searching for moments of margin in our lives. And the point is that um, 
when life is busy, we are constantly every day prioritizing where we spend our time. And thus, back to this whole concept of we want to attract patients that truly want what we're serving, what we're providing, don't treat us as a commodity. Um, and then they're more apt to prioritize us in our in our life. Amen, brother. Amen. So another thing, as far as verbal skills goes, um, you know, verbal skills matter. I think if there's, there's, I'm a big fan of systems, I'm a big fan of training your team. And I don't think you can do enough on verbal skills. I think you should make it a lifelong journey just to learn from the best communicators there. Cause your ability to communicate will greatly determine how far you go in anything. And so some of the best hygienists I've ever seen, they use this phrase and I loved it. It was, we consider all appointments confirmed when scheduled. Now, I first saw this in New York and San Francisco, because if you notice on the coast, a lot of our practices, they don't even like the word confirm because confirm implies, are you coming? And so when it comes to busy New York or busy San Francisco, they set the expectation right at the chair. Mrs. Jones, we consider all appointments confirmed when scheduled. Now, I am very happy to remind you or send a reminder out a day prior or two days prior if you would like, but make no mistake, this is confirmed. You will be here and I will too. And I, it was fun to, to kind of watch that because you don't want to give the patient the option of thinking they could cancel that appointment. And it's funny, even an open table, because I love to go out to eat. I use open table. I confirm everything. They still call me at my favorite restaurant. I'm like, I've already confirmed. Well, we're just going to make sure that you're still coming. All right. Any special occasion? And I love that because they're adding an additional question and they pay attention to what I tell them. And it just adds more value for the appointment. I also want to encourage you, don't use the word cancellation. Now, this is 10 years old. You should never use the word cancellation. I'm using it today to describe this problem in dentistry. But when you're talking to a patient, don't ever use the word cancellation because you can trade that word out for violation. If you ever call a patient and say, yeah, we had a cancellation today, you might as well just trade that word out for, yeah, Mrs. Jones, somebody violated us today and just didn't show. You want to come in hoping you don't violate us. My first thought, is if you have a cancellation, why? Why would someone cancel on you? You guys are good at what you do. And so I like the word change or words, change in schedule. You can present that as a benefit to a patient that you're going to reschedule for that appointment. So here's how that would work. Mrs. Jones, we have had a change in schedule today and I can get you, I now can get you in today at 9 a.m. or tomorrow at 9 a.m. So this is a lifelong practice, but please don't use the word cancellation. Make it a regular practice to leave this word out of your vocabulary because it implies that somebody violated you. You should be so good that no one ever cancels on you. And if they do, be careful about your words and how you position that as a benefit for your other patients. So I, I also think this is a big one. Make it hard for patients to cancel or reappoint. If you're going to cancel on me, I'm not going to say, that's okay. Don't ever say, that's okay. If you call me and I'm working the front desk of your office and you cancel on me, I'm going to go, whoa, okay. Mm. Ooh. I'm going to let you sweat that out because you can't just call me and cancel a two-hour appointment for Dr. Baird Straub. You know how hard I have to work now to fill that appointment? Now, if you're legitimately sick, that's a whole different deal. This is the one of the few occasions. There's only two occasions you should ever put a patient on hold. Uh, one of them is canceling. The second one is if it's a new patient, you just need to sequester your thoughts and get to a private place to give them your full attention. But if somebody's going to cancel, I highly encourage you to put them on hold. Let them sweat this out for a couple of reasons. Number one, you're going to gather yourself because you want to gather yourself in the moment. You're going to figure out who is this patient? Okay, now are they an A patient? Are they a B, C, B patient? Or are they a C patient? Because I'm not going to respond the same way to an A patient than I would a C patient. An A patient, I'm going to express concern. I'm going to express empathy. And I'm going to reinforce their positive behavior. I'm going to say, Nancy, are you okay? This is so unlike you. You never cancel your appointments. Is everything okay? I'm going to reinforce the positive behavior. 
Now, if this is the 11th time you've canceled or ninth time, I'm going to gather myself, gather the data so that I can appropriately respond to you in a way that's mutually beneficial for both of us. And I'm not going to let this happen again. So I'm going to make it hard for you to cancel a reappointment. And I actually love what you guys do in your practice, Barrett. Um, your team members at the front will come and get you. They'll tell the patient, hold on, let me tell Dr. Straub. Can you explain that one? That's, well, that's one of my know, favorite. Back to the point that the patient is less apt to cancel if they know that the doctor or and or hygienist will find out. And, and so some of our verbiage was like, okay, let me, you know, let, I'm going to let Dr. Straub know that you need to cancel today. And, and, and a lot of times they still had to cancel. Um, but it put that pain in there. Like, oh my gosh, I'm letting him down. I'm letting her down. Um, and so there's lots of verbiage that you're going to get to, but like, is everything okay? Is there any way you can, you can hold this appointment today? Let me put you on hold. I'm going to let Dr. Strab know you won't be making it today. You know, 20% of the time they're like, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll be there. Don't worry about right. it. You know? Um, and so it works, it works really well. Yeah. And I think the big learning here or what I'd want to teach in this is that it takes a little bit of thinking, you know, as a team member, don't be so quick to respond. I would just pause. It's okay not to talk. Just listen, because you're going to hear everything on the phone. And if they're legitimately sick, you you can't battle with that. You just have to be empathetic. But you know how this happened. People go, <laughs> I need to cancel so, and it's a three-hour appointment. And then the doctor goes to the football game that night and sees him drinking beer. Do you know what I mean? Or, and you're like, okay, she canceled the three-hour appointment. What we want to do is just say, okay, let's pause. Let me figure this out. There are sometimes patients just don't want to come in for a lot of different reasons. My job as an admin team member is I'm going to try to protect the schedule with my life. And if I can get you to come in and you also can ask patients questions, what kind of illness do you have? That's an interesting one. Try that one. And they go, I'm sick. Go, what kind of illness do you have? They'll go, um, I have a cold. <laughs> there are some illnesses where they can come in. Just ask questions. Here's another one that I learned from our coaches. If you're struggling with what to say, just go, gosh, Nancy. Oh, that's a three-hour appointment. Is there any way you can make it today? Pause. It's not going to get all of them, but I would say 20% of them are going to go, okay, I think I can make it. I think I can get a ride. Don't be so quick to respond. Enjoy the silence, ask good questions, and help the patient keep the appointment because there's a good chance if it's a three-hour appointment, we're not going to be able to get them back for a long time, which can compromise a lot of things. So it's important. Now, we're going to respond to different types of patients here. And again, there are people that value what you do and there are people that don't value what you do. And so empathy, you know, concern for A patients and C patients, you can put this again in your schedule. This question always comes up. Like, where do I put it? This is Eagle Soft. You can put it in Eagle Soft. You just got to get creative about where you put it. But what you'll find over time is that as your patient base distribution changes from all A's, B's, and C's equal distributions to more A's and less C's, your production goes up. They also refer other patients to say, I already know the deal. You guys are a little bit more expensive, but you're worth it. You want to build a practice long-term of people that value what you do, show up, and they pay. And that's as simple as you can make it. And so what you don't want to do is schedule C's. C's are not bad people. They just, by the data that you can see in your computer, have not demonstrated a value for what you do. I'll start with hygiene. This is a great opportunity in your morning huddle. If you're a hygienist, you can just look at your schedule and go, wow, I got two C's today. These are less desirable patients. One's canceled 11 times, one's canceled seven times. Hey, doctor, can I free up these patients? And the doctor will look at the data and go, absolutely. So you could see them that day. And then when it comes to scheduling them in the future, you don't have to schedule them. You are not required by law to keep a hygiene patient in your schedule. Now, in all 50 states, you are required by law to finish treatment once you start treatment on a dental patient. But in hygiene, you can walk a patient up to the front, treat them with great respect, great dignity, Give them a great experience and say, have a great summer. 
And they'll say to you, well, shouldn't I make another appointment? And you can say, you're good. You're good. Why don't you call us in a couple of months? Call us in six months, um, but you're good. 16 months will pass and you'll become too busy to see those patients. Here's the point. Most every practice we see now is way too busy. They have way too many patients and they're booking every patient out and they have no openings every six months. I can tell you right now, you don't need all of those patients. Your job is to start putting the right patients in your chairs over time. And by that process, you'll see the entire practice change. But I need everybody enlisted in this opportunity to make this happen. If I'm a hygienist, I'm going to start freeing up the C's and making space for A's. And so that's as simple as you want to make it. Don't start, don't send out letters. Don't do that. Just stop stalking C patients. That's the teaching there. And then we also want to create space. Dentists hate spaces. They hate spaces in conversation. They hate spaces in teeth. They hate spaces in schedule. Spaces are beautiful. Build some space. And so where you're going to build space to reduce cancellations and create a better practice ultimately is you want to book your hygiene appointments out six months plus two weeks. Now, I need a whole hour to talk about. I could do 50 benefits of booking patients six months plus two weeks. If anyone's ever received the five month, 28 day letter from an insurance company, that's the dumbest letter ever, is that you want to book it out for, further enough that you don't even see those letters anymore. You also want to give space for new patients. You want to give space for perio. You want to give space for a lot of different things that could happen in a hygiene schedule. And so I like the idea of booking out six months plus two weeks just to give us some space and start to build the type of patient base that we want long-term. It is not good to be booked out continuously all the time. You need space for something that might happen and the ability to get a new patient in, in that whole process. And I'll couple this along, and Barrett, I'd love to know your thoughts on this. I like the idea of calling further out than one day. So again, we're going to call it, we're going to book out six months plus two weeks, but then I also want to employ the idea of, I'm going to call two weeks prior. Some people don't like this, I'm just going to encourage you to call at least one week prior, but two weeks prior. So again, I'm protecting the entire schedule with my life, mostly the restorative because restorative has a bigger impact financially and emotionally on the entire practice. So that's my first concern. Not that hygiene is any less important, but that's the chance where the dentist could lose their mind. So I got to make sure I mitigate the practice from that emotional stress. And then I'm going to work on the hygiene schedule, maybe two weeks out. And I was just going to call. And all I want to do is get the patient on the phone. Now, this is harder than ever. And so I'm going to call patients as much as I can to get them on the phone. And here's the teaching in this webinar. If I can get a patient on the phone two weeks from today that has a hygiene appointment and they say anything other than great, I'll be there. There's a 50% chance they're not coming. Here's how this works. I call Nancy two weeks from today. Saying, hey, Nancy, just call. I had a couple questions about your appointment with our hygienist, Sally. Hey, can you call me back when you get a chance? But if you get her on the phone, she's going to say, I totally forgot. School is out that day. What do you already know? You already know she's not coming. There's a 50 per Here's what you have. You have a two-week window that you can now pull patients forward. And you can say as an admin team, Mrs. it sounds like that's a challenge. Here, I'll tell you what. I actually have an opening tomorrow or the next day. I'm pulling great patients from the future and I'm putting them in my schedule this week or next week. Here's the graphic I want you to understand. I'm taking green bricks from the future and I'm stacking them this week and next week. You're not going to mitigate all the yellow and red bricks. And I don't mean to equate patients to bricks. That's not my point, but I want to build a regular schedule of green bricks. Then the more that I can do that, the better this practice gets, the stronger it gets, the happier people get. It's awesome. Most practices call 24 hours prior to the appointment and they never get anybody on the phone and you don't know what to do. You can't get the patient on the phone. So you know what you do? And this is what happens in most practices. You go to that mud at the bottom of the river, which is all these patients that have canceled 11 times. And you grab all this mud from the bottom of the river and you start slapping it in the schedule because you know the dentist is going to freak out if they see an empty chair. Don't do that. Pull the good ones from the future. Now, is this always possible? No, but you want to get them on the phone as much as possible. The number one way to get people on the phone, I love this one. This is so great. Try this today. If you have a teenage daughter, try this. You can get almost anyone to call you back. If you employ one thing, it's called 
curiosity. Never call, never tell people why you're calling. Just create a little curiosity. So try this at home. Call your daughter. I'll call Zoe today. Go, Zoe, hey, I just ran into that boy you like. You're not going to believe what he just said. Call me back. Guess how fast your daughter will call you back. 60 seconds. Anyone calls me and tells me while they're really calling, delete, delete. I actually don't even answer my cell phone ever. But if somebody calls me and says, hey, Kirk, this is so-and-so. We have an appointment set up for Friday. I have a couple questions. It's at nine o'clock. Can you call me back? Of course, I'm going to call back. So you want to create a little bit of curiosity. And Stephen Heckler, if you're listening, he's one of the best. Or uh, orthodontist, Kansas City. Zoe, my daughter, was going through ortho. I get a message from Dr. Stephen Heckler. He's, she was 12, I think, 12 or 11. I don't know. Hey, Kirk, Dr. Stephen Heckler here. Hey, saw your daughter today, Zoe. What a great kid. Hey, saw something on an x-ray. Call me back. Okay. My daughter, 11, 12, whenever she went, saw something on an x-ray. Orthodox. How fast do you think I call him back? I didn't even listen to the end of the message. I call him right back. Dr. Heckler, Mr. Kirk, he goes, works every time. I go, you little, he goes, works every time. He said, I never tell patients why I'm calling. I just tell them I saw something and I want them to call me back. This is what he said to me. She's got an extra tooth, Kirk. It's got to come out. Here's how this is going to work. He told me the deal. My oral surgeon's going to call you tomorrow at eight o'clock. You're going to pick up that call. I said, yes, sir. And you're going to schedule that tooth. Tooth's got to come out. In orthodontics, starts, <laughs> there's things getting in the way. I got it. He told me on the phone, if I can't get a patient on the phone, 50% of the time, tooth comes out. So here's my point. Create a little curiosity, get the patients to call you back. It won't work every time, but you'll, you'll, you'll get some success. And any hesitation, if I breathe in, and go, oh gosh, I totally, I already know you're not coming. You're a great patient. I'm pulling you forward and mutually beneficially, I'm going to help you. That sounds like that's a problem. Let me help you out. Dr. schraub has got a great appointment next Tuesday. Let's put you in there. Okay. See, you want to work together in this. Now, a couple things in general, you don't want to put your patients on hold, but again, I like putting them on hold when they try to cancel or reschedule their payment. You just want to gather their information, review their history, and you can respond differently in different circumstances. Now, I've got this as a handout, you know, in the, in the replay I'll put in, but I actually put a whole bunch of slides in here and how you can respond differently to A, B, and C patients. And that's not what this is all about, but I want to finish just addressing some of the chronic issues and then we'll be done here. Um, but when you respond to some of these things, a big thing that I like to reduce cancellations is before care calls. New patients are very important to your practice. I would encourage doctors, just call, leave a message. You're not encouraging patients to call back, but you can say, hey, Mrs. Jones, looking forward to seeing you. My name is Dr. Straub. I know I'm going to see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. And I just want to let you know I'm looking forward to seeing you. So if you have any questions, please let our office know, but we'll see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. I'm reinforcing that it's me that's going to see you at nine. Better make it. So it's really good. Now, the chronic thing is two things. Number one, stop, stop. You got to create, you know, collect data. Stop stalking your C patients and you'll see a lot of these challenges go away. And then when it comes to systems like cancellations, I get this one every time. People are like, well, what about cancellation fees? I think every practice in the world should have a cancellation fee, but never, ever, 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 ever use it. It should be $75 or $100. But let's just go there. If you're charging somebody $75, you're not making any money and you're just irritating the situation. If you charge me $75 for my fourth missed appointment, I am going to get so angry with you that I might go on to your website and give you a one-star review on Google to say, this doctor needs the money. My dog was sick. You know, here's the thing I want you to understand. People that don't value what you do, you don't want to argue with them. Don't argue with them. Don't. I had a dentist come up to me one time. He said, I don't agree with this whole cancel. I charge cancellation fees all day long. I said, can I ask you a question? He said, sure. I go, do you have any bad reviews? He's like, a lot of them. It's the fastest way to create some bad blood. And so I would use the cancellation fee, but I wouldn't apply it. So if you canceled for the fourth time or third time, I'd say, Mrs. Jones or Mr. Jones, gosh, mm, 
We do have a cancellation fee of $100. I'm not going to apply it today, but please know in the future, when we schedule your appointment, I need to know that you're going to be here. You know, it's unfortunate that that happened today. And even if they canceled again, I still wouldn't apply it because it doesn't benefit anyone to do that. So that's just my opinion, but we see way too many bad reviews and they're directly related to this one thing. You're not winning when you're charging that. So I'll end for any questions. I know, do we have any questions at all? Please add any questions you guys have to the feed. Not yet, but yeah, put them in the Q&A section and I, I'd be happy to... Um... Here, a couple of questions did come through on being able to watch the recording. Yes. Uh, and th what th is for 72 hours or three days? Is that correct? I was just going to confirm how this. That is correct. So we will have this recording up until Sunday night. Okay. I'm going to include two things. I'll include the capacity tracker as a great download. Just use it. You'll see how it's super easy. You'll love it. It's great. I'll also <laughs> attach my slides. You can have my slides. Um, if you want to see how to respond to an A, B, and C patient. And I'm just going to encourage you, use it as education for your team. Your team members, I'll speak to the team members at the front. I have a special place in my heart for admin team members because there's not a lot of great training. We have great training here, but there's not a lot of great training. A lot of great admin team members, they're just thrown into the jungle and some dentist says, go to work. And so we want to give everybody in the practice, not just the admin team members, great verbal skills, great thinking, so that you can keep a schedule together with the right type of people. So please use all this. If you need any help, reach out to us. And then also for those of you, now this is dentist only for our To The Top Study Club. If you're looking for a great study club and you just want to be part of something that energizes you, you've got a copy of this in your inbox. Feel free to fill it out. I'll have Gina, one of our team members, reach out to you. You can come hang out with us. I promise you you will leave fired up. It's a lot of information. How many of you have ever been to a course that was four days long and you're like, you could have made this course a one day course. I've done that too many times in my life. We put so much information in a one day course, it'll be a little bit over, overwhelming, but it'll be really good stuff. So you can go back and create a better practice and better life. Yeah, Kirk, we got some really good, good questions here. So We'll get to a, a, a few of these and there's some overlap. So um, what about seeing patients that are late? I'll Ooh. tell you what, I tell you what I always did. And it's a, it, it, it's, it's a tough one. Um, we would, we would usually um, set a time frame. Like, and it was usually around fit. We always had our hygiene appointments and we usually had like a 15 minute um, border. If it's 20 minutes late, we just say no, because we have to build some value. If it's like, 12, 10, 12, 13 minutes late, we would say, hey, Mrs. Jones, um, we understand you're late. Uh, we know that happens. However, um, we'll get as much done as we can, but there's a likelihood we will not be able to get everything done and we'll we'll we will have you back. So we, we offer to see them, but we recognize and say like, you're here 20 minutes late. We're not going to get an hour's worth of work done because you just then devalued um, the 60 minute time slot that you do give. So you meet the patient halfway, they're there, you might as well do what you can, um, but also make the point that uh, there's a chance you're gonna have to come back. We may not be able to do the x-rays today. We'll do those next time. You have to make some adjustment um, and then iterate, You know, make it known like, this is not this is not okay. All too often we in dentistry, whether they cancel or no show say, it's okay, not a problem. Even though it is, that's human nature. We want to make it sound like it's okay. We understand. But you're literally telling them it's okay to do this. Same with being late. If they show up 17 minutes late and you're like, yeah, not a problem. We'll get it all done. You just said that you only really do 40 minutes of work in that 60 minute value. So um, anything you'd add to that, Kirk? Yeah, I love this. And I, I can't remember if you said it. I've heard this so many times. This is why to the top is so cool because you hear some of the best verbal skills ever from some of these practices. Somebody said this. I love this. They'll say, they'll point to the clock and say, Mrs. Jones, as you can see, it's 20 minutes after the hour. I don't have the time to give you the care you deserve today. We're going to do what we can. But in the future, it's very important that you are here for the full time so that I can give you the care you deserve. Now, I'm still going. 
And I asked, do you still charge? They're like, absolutely. We still do charge. Now that's a discretionary element for the dentist. There are some times where you may or may not, but the point is this, it is not okay to be late. You know, a lot of times I heard somebody say this, patients kick you in the shins and we reward them with Snickers bars. We go, they kick you in the shin. You go, that's okay. Here, have another Snickers bar. You don't want to do that. We got to let them know. No, no, no. I need you to be on time for this appointment in order for us to give you the full care we deserve. And that is true and spot on. Any hygienist will tell you 20 minutes after the hour, man, I am racing to do what I need to do to give this patient what they need, you know? So prepayments for C patients, what do you think about that? So I, I'm not opposed to it. I think, I think it's okay to ask a patient for a prepayment. Don't you think? I love prepayments for all patients because <laughs> yeah, that's great. You want, you want to lower your cancellation rate, no show rate. People show sure. up when they have money on the line already. So we collect, um, we collected for any big case ahead of time. Um, definitely see patients. Uh, we would always um, collect again, because you're saying that a, a lot of patients no show or cancel because they know they're, they need to write you a check for 1500 bucks and they don't have it. I want to right. know whether they have it well beyond the day of the appointment. Right. Okay. And so if they pre half of it up front, they're going to show up. So I love that idea. I like that. Yeah. And I would also point out too, like prepayment for all appointments is not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing because you're going to get what's called commitment. If I'm giving you money, I'm committed to being there. And it's amazing how much you do up front, the less you have to do later. The real important point is that even if you ask for money from a C patient, is that the long-term game of the practice? You know, sometimes C patients will change their behavior, but not a lot of them. And you got to point it out like, hey, if you're collecting a payment for a C patient, there's a good chance they're still going to miss appointments. There are people that are on time and there are people that not, and you're just not going to be able to fix that. So great questions. I love it. Love it. Any other questions that came Pat, up? In the Pat the asked if a, when a patient reschedules or cancels, do we always code the ledger regardless of how much notice? So my answer would be you set a policy, whether that's we, you know, 48 hours or more is okay. 48 hours and less counts as a cancellation. Um, you set your policy, whether it's 48 hours or a week or whatever, and then you just code it that way. Anything less than that timeline, that line in the sand you draw, um, you code it. Agree, yeah. disagree? I totally agree. Totally yeah. agree. The whole idea on everything is to have a written system. So if you have two people at the front, we are on the same page about what Barrett just said. I know exactly how we see this issue in our practice. And we use the exact same phrases to describe that to patients because the signature of mediocrity is chronic inconsistency. Whether you're the dentist or team members sending patients conflicting messages, we just all want to be on the same page. Now, there was one question here, charging for a late fee. Um, can you speak to that one? I'm... I never charge for a late fee. Um, I would always, you know, just do what you said. Like, I don't have the time you deserve today. Here's what we're going to do. You always want to flip it to, here's what we can do. Right. We're going to do part of it today. I'm right. going to bring you back for an exam. Any, any, you know, talk about like making lemonades at 11. Anytime you can have, get a patient to come back in your chair for an exam, you just won, right? So yeah. patients 20 minutes late, like, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we can do. I'm going to have you back to give you the time you deserve. And now I have you on one-on-one -on -one time and I can really um, spend some good quality time with you doing a one-on-one -on -one exam. So yeah. Um, yeah every question is a, yeah. Every question is a good one. And I totally agree with what Barrett, Barrett said. And I would just say like, that's a damaging dollar to your practice. I would almost challenge you that if we coded that and I looked at that, okay, let's take a look at late fees and these patients. That's not a good patient for your practice. All of the data tells you a story. The key in data is you got to know what the story tells us. So I, I agree, like damaging, that's a dollar you probably don't want to collect in your practice. And then um, let's see other questions. Great questions, you guys. Uh, what if you have chronic reschedulers? Um, that's a, that's a vision decision for the practice. But I think, um, Ken Allen, who's a dentist, uh, he, he's great. He created an incredible system. 
He's like, here's what a great patient is to our practice. And he said, the line in the sand is three. And so um, once they're three, they get coded. And then I have the opportunity to upgrade them or reinstate them as an A patient. But I'm going to have an honest conversation with them because he loves these people. And he's got to let them know, like, I can't give you another appointment. Here's why. Let me print out the ledger. I'll show you. There are three appointments that we gave you. So I don't like the idea of chronic rescheduling. I mean, remember, you're adding a lot of work for the team at the front. And, and that's just, the fifth. That's the fifth code because I forgot we we are, you have to code you have to track that too. So we would we made up a code called rescheduled appointment. So they canceled it over the forty eight hours. It's legal, if you will, but right. your, your team always knows who these people are that do that a lot. So we wanted to track it, and then you can say, you know. Mrs. Jones, it appears that our schedule just isn't working for you due to the a lot of reschedules. Here's what we can do for you. You call us when you know you can make it, and we'll call you when we have last minute changes to our schedule, and we'll see if it works. So there are some, some things that you can do, uh, but you got to track it. So that's like a fifth code is a, a reschedule appointment code. Now I got to change my slides again I know. for five codes. I, I love it. See again, that's why you got to show up for these webinars. Kurt, what's the email? Work. What's the email to get that butts in the chair sheet? Do you want to yeah, just, you, you Kirk, just Kirk, Kirk at Act yeah. Dental? Kirk at Act Dental, K-I-R-K at A-C-T Dental. And for anything you guys need, this is what this community is all about. We're all about helping you all create a better practice and better life. It's an awesome community. There's no bad questions. I want you to walk away from everything you experienced from us going, I learned a lot. That helped me a ton. So keep sending us suggestions. We got an incredible lineup of education in front of us and we'll keep stacking them for you guys uh, and uh, spread the word and keep coming back. It's only going to get better. So Barrett, thanks for being on brother. Appreciate My you. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you guys for listening. If you're listening to us live, uh, you can expect the replay to go out tomorrow. If you're watching on the replay, you should have all of this information. Don't forget to join us at TTT, the um, To the Top Study Club. And until we see you guys next time or hear us next time, keep hanging out. We'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.